Welcome everybody to All Even, excuse me, I'm saying All Even Live, All Even Podcast exclusive interview, special interview today. We got a um, motivational speaker, Antoine Harris, joining the show today, so definitely excited about that. I'm just waiting for everybody else to get in here. Coach Harris, you may have to up, uh, update your phone, update your Instagram. I'm trying to put you in, but you can't. I can't get you in. You got to update it. <laughs> Just waiting for our guests to. You know, go through the technical difficulties or the technical part of it. You got to update your phone and all that. So. Yo, yo, what up, what up? Should be a fun, fun day, fun interview. I can't wait for this one. And our hour, what's going on, man? How you doing? Shouts to my man, Nathan. Yeah, I can't get you on right now, Nathan. I gotta, I gotta wait for Coach Harris. So, after the interview, we can set something up. Antoine Harris is being interviewed today. Motivational speaker, played at Winthrop University, um, assistant coach. He was the women's coach or assistant. He was at Longwood University. He's 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 been around. He's been around. So, you know, we're definitely going to get him in here right now. Let him tell a story. So. Hello, 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 sir. Yo, man, I uh, what's good? The uh, How you doing, man? update situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you always, you always gotta check that. Like I, I found that out, like you know, a couple of months back, where it's like I don't know why it's not working. You always gotta go into the the Play Store and update it, and you're 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 fine. You're good to go. Yeah, man. I I was like, what? Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> so. Coach Harris, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome to the All Even Podcast special interview. Um, you know, you definitely reached out to me and you wanted to be on the show. This is this yeah. is a great, you know, this is this is going to be great. Uh, you know, I've I've read up on you. You 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 got a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, you've you've done a lot of stuff. So, definitely want to just start kind of at the beginning. Um, you know, you're a basketball player. You decided to go to juco you went the juco route first and so you know kind of talk us through that and then how you got got to winthrop yeah uh thanks for having me man it's an honor foremost uh to, to be on the podcast uh all even podcast man just blessed to be here uh but let's get started with that that journey right that journey yeah crazy uh being being you know ball player in high school you know was pretty good you know was pretty yeah. good ever However, the JUCO route came because uh, I was a teen parent, man, at 17. Wow. wow. And my daughter at 17, man, August 20th of 20, uh, 2003. So those, the interest dropped. Yeah, yeah. And I was getting letters ever since uh, my sophomore season. So 
you know, I knew that I was determined to go Division One. Had a ton of naysayers, too small, don't have a position. You know, heard that a lot. Um, but you know, people really underestimated the heart of a champion. Really underestimated. Of course. Always work ethic. Um, how much I play game. Uh, how much of an environment that I've create that I have created for my um, teammates or whatever. Right. So, you know that. You know, people underestimate that. Underestimate the power of God. You know, just super blessed in my life and the some of the decisions that I've made. So, you know, going going from high school to JUCO. I mean, that was the reason. You know, they they would say different things like, "Oh, uh, you know, really don't have a position for him and stuff like that." But I just knew I was I was good enough, right? So, right. my confidence was very key in my development and my journey. Um, being humble was very key in my development and my journey. Uh, and just, you know, those opportunities, it it really fueled my fire. Like, I mean, they just started getting pulled, pulled, pulled to just like two, a prep school and a, a couple JUCOs. So I um, decided yeah. to go to State Fair my first year. State Fair is Sedalia, Missouri. Uh, played in that region. We had a very good team, very good freshman class. Uh, but at the end of that year, we the, they forced the coach out. So we all decided to go to another school. He helped us get to another school, right? Um, again, like I said, that team was so it was really, really good. Our freshman class was good. So I started some games, came off the bench, ended up averaging about 10 a game maybe, yeah. close to it. So then it came, It comes a time for going to our next school. So I get a call. Well, I actually talked to the assistant coach at Highland Community College yeah. for Illinois, and that's kind of where it all started, right? That's yeah. where it started to go crazy. That's when it took off, yeah. It, it took off. However, it took off because more fuel was added to my fire. I ended up being a package deal with my buddy Mars. Right. Okay. I'm on the back end of a package deal. How do I know this? Yeah. Um, because Marv, he was the first one on the deal because he averaged like before semester break, like 20 a game, close to 20. Yeah. Small guard can really go um, out of Camden, South Carolina. So he could go. And I was on the back end of that. They, I just kind of threw me in as a part yeah. of the deal. I was like, okay, they went to nationals. I'm all about winning. Let's go. So I get there. And I just keep hearing the name of one of my uh, teammates, Swanee Cooper, Swanee Cooper, this, that, and the third. I'm like, all right, here we go again. These odds. I feel <laughs> yeah. Like they're they just, they just, they just keep coming at you. Keep stacking against me, right? Keep stacking against me. And it's like, all right, man, I got all these logs on the fire, man. It's time to go. Right. So, you know, we do open gym practices, you know, preparing, and I just, like, unleash this person who has been working so hard over the summer, who, as a father now, just, like, has some different, just just some different things going on in my head. Like, I, I can't lose. Like, I can't lose. So I, I went on and had a very successful couple of years, uh, a year there, um, led the team in scoring, second in rebounding, first in field goal percentage. We went 34-2. and two. I went wow. every award. I won uh, multiple MVP awards that wow. season. First team All-American, first team All-Conference, first team All-Region, Region Player of the Year. Just, all, you know, um, and there was only 10 people who got first team All-American. Yeah. So I was one of 10 in, of the entire country in the NJCAA Division One. So – you know, the highest level of JUCO and killed it. Went to nationals, finished third. Like I said, 34-2. and two. I think we won 29 straight games that year wow. at some point. Impressive. So being the leader um, of that squad, both in production and energy, uh, was just something different. You know what I'm saying? So that catapulted me to, you know, all these offers coming in March and April from Division One, so it's just like, all right, now this is what I'm talking about. Right. That's this, <laughs> this is 
that I was like, yeah, this is, you know, I get to pick. So um, have an opportunity to, you know, Winthrop came up because there were some networking things, uh, you know, how, how that works. Coaches kind of yeah. work. Our coaches really work hard for us. Right. On, let me just say, on that team, out of 15 players, 14 of us went Division One. Wow. Wow. That Now, that's that's impressive. That's impressive. That's how that we were, right? So um, get the offer from Winthrop, and I was sold at winning. You know, I'm yeah. winning, coming together collectively, all on the same goal. So about that culture. Yep. Yeah, so it's about the culture. So being um, being offered there, knowing that they've been to the NC2As, the Mar March Madness tournament the last couple of years prior, it was like, it's a no-brainer. Southern region, my family get to watch games, right. uh, Fox Sports South, so they have, so we had national televised games on ESPN, ESPN2. We had regional televised games on Fox Sports South, and we had local televised games on uh, CN CN2 or something like that. Yeah. So with that exposure, you know, I'm like everybody else, I'm trying to go to the league. Of course, of course. I'm trying to go to the league. So I get there, and it's a rude awakening yet again. Like, <laughs> boys can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I look at the rosters like, oh, man, this person coming back, this person coming back. I just start filtering through the roster, like trying to see where I would be able to find myself, right, going into a program that's already established. Yeah. Um, so, again, another rude awakening. First individual workout, I'm like, what is this? Couldn't finish it. I was dog wow. 20 minutes in, didn't realize, you know, I really pride myself on working hard, right? Yeah. I was people, but this was another level that I wasn't used to. So in most things, like in life, you just got to adjust. And it took me probably a semester to adjust. Now, now, when you say in regards to, you know, the adjustment period, because obviously it's a, it's another grade. It's a you know, you, you, you need that you need that time to kind of, you know, get your body ready for that. Now, being a father and having all of these different things, you know, thrown at you, did it make you more prepared to be prepared to step your game up? Because a lot of people, they'll, they'll look at that challenge and be like, oh, man, I, I don't really know if I can do it. But the I fact that you've, you've you, you know, you've You've seen some adversity. You've met some 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 challenges. Did that prepare you to actually meet that that challenge? No question. No question that it really kind of prepared me because it was like I've been down this road before. Yeah, I yeah. know what it looks like. I right. mean, one of the one of the major keys in my life was when I was fifteen. Okay, and I had a person. I fell out on the court in practice had to be taken to the hospital, eventually having a heart procedure in the spring of 2002. Wow. My, my entire AAU season was canceled. So now, like, that was the biggest obstacle because I wasn't sure if I was going to play ball again. Right. So if I can make it out of a life-death situation in basketball, there is nothing that's going to stop me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, like, to your point, being prepared – to go through that, absolutely. Going from a near-death experience to leading my high school team to his first ever championship, coming right. out in the fourth seed. We were the fourth seed. Uh, so being able to to do all of – I know we were the fifth seed, sorry. Being able to do that, uh, just that mentality, watching Michael Jordan, yeah. watching OB, like those are the two, two people that I, I really kind of – looked up to you know yeah. my my house growing up was very competitive so i was very prepared to like i can't give up i can't go i can't i got i got youngsters now i got right. kids you got people depending on you yeah you know what i'm saying so being able to take those challenges on was it was a blessing it was a yeah. blessing and uh, that's why when i get in situations in life today uh, it's like it's adversity, you know. It comes in your face, knock down that wall, and you keep moving because you know what I decide, what I realized. It's all about how you respond. 
Right. It's all about how you respond. I and agree. Like, I agree. You know, some people who they they see it and they just like, oh, this is too much, right? So it was how I responded. You, in ways, you have to compartmentalize some things that will, um, you know, help you get through it. You know, you yeah. just you gotta put your feelings, kind of put your feelings aside, and just kind of like train your mind to just, you know, go through these tough situations. Nah, it's, it's it, that's that's a hundred percent facts, man. Like you know, my mom always tells me it's you know pride come before the fall. You know what I mean? So it's like you know you gotta make sure you humble yourself and you understand the situation that you're in, and like you say, you gotta you gotta get up. Like you're you're gonna get punched in the face so many times in life. Like mm -hmm. nobody, everybody out here has battle scars, that's but it's the people it's the people that are willing to continue to get up and say, all right, like. I just took 10 of your best shots. Like, what else do you have? You know what I mean? Like, that. those are the people that are that are going to be successful in life, no matter what it is. It doesn't have to be playing basketball. It doesn't have to be, yeah. you know, it, it, whatever it is in your life. Like, that's the key to success. So, you know, you having that mindset prepared you for being able to, to rise to that challenge at Winthrop. And, you know, kudos to you, man. Hats off. Yeah, uh, I appreciate that. You know, I just – what I like to say is, like, you cannot let your excuses get in the way of executing your goals, your plans. Exactly. Teams. Like when it comes to those excuses, you got to challenge them first off. Yeah. Got to challenge those excuses. You got to unpack those excuses and then don't use those, those excuses and keep moving forward. So like right. I, there, there, I got to tell you this other story, man. I got stories that went through before I was able to prepare, prepare myself. Yeah. There. Uh, Christmas break comes. I go home, visit my family, uh, you know, kids and stuff like that. My fam uh, brother, sister, mom, all of that. We have a great time. So on the way back, I'm supposed to catch a ride with one of the women's basketball players. I missed that yep. ride because it was different time zones and I timed it wrong. Right. Get to win like, so at this point, I'm late. I miss practice. I have to take a great bus. From Knoxville, Tennessee to Rock Hill, have somebody <laughs> pick me up, right? And I show up to practice nervous. All my play, all my teammates, roommates calling, texting. I don't pick up because I knew I had hell to pay. Yeah, yeah. Things that was like you know, you know about respect and don't be late. Don't ever be late. So right, I was up with the. I had uh, been challenged. My coach said he was going to run me until I quit <laughs> because I was late. I was late, missed the whole practice, right? Um, needless to say, I never surrendered, right? I fought through after every practice. I ran before and after practice, like throwing up, right? And what that did is how I responded. I responded in a way that was... I didn't get down on myself, stay positive. You know, I deserved it because I was late, right. broke school. And then comes conference. Our starting wing goes out injured. So then I get inserted into the starting lineup. Nice. And uh, that, I think, without going through that time of being late and, like, everything is was preparation for that moment when I came. Exactly. Home, first game of conference, dropped 22. And bowling after that. Second game, 21 with a game winner. Uh, but all of that was built over time because I had to make those adjustments, how I responded, uh, and not use these excuses and just keep fighting and pushing forward because I had, I had some schedule events, whether it's practice, uh, extra workouts, film with coaches one-on-one. -on -one. So those scheduled events turned into my success at Winter. Right. So Yeah, definitely, man. And you know, you ended up you ended up becoming the, the team captain, you know, yeah. for your for your for your last season. So like that that's Absolutely. all the hard work that you put in, the respect that you got from your teammates, your peers, the coaching staff, everybody. Like, you know, that's that's a big deal. A lot of people don't really you know, we don't hear that much about team captains in sports anymore. Like, it's just like a cliche thing now. You hear yeah. somebody has a seal on their chest or whatever it is. But that's a really, really important 
accomplishment and achievement for anybody to have. So, you know, you, you deserve you deserve a lot of respect for that. And I'm sure your teammates to this day, you know, you have you had that respect from them. Yeah, for sure. And they uh it was so crazy because my senior season, the local paper, our beat writer, did a whole story on it. A whole it was a big deal. They did an entire story on it. Uh actually the title of it was Never Surrender. If you go to my website, you click on you scroll down and click on the link, it'll take yeah. you right to that uh that article where talked about it, went through it. And um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was definitely crazy. And another thing that happened that year was that was crazy was I ended up being in sports illustrated. I got my right. full page picture in a sports illustrated. Like I didn't expect that. I didn't right. think that happened. Sporting news and just sporting news magazine was in there a lot of time. They actually featured our team. So just those opportunities, man, like, just working hard, not giving right. up, you know, right. and just just having the mental stamina. Uh, you know, you can you can be mentally tough, but how long does that last? Right, you gotta have mental stamina to keep you know keep you going. So yeah, yeah, you know, there's a, there's so many kids that that are in those situations that you've had, like you know, right. father at an early age. You know, they were athletes, but something happened to the fact that, you know, they had to go the other route. Instead of just going straight to D1, they got to go the JUCO route, and then they flush out. Something happens, and they don't they don't make it. It's just exactly what you said. It's about having that stamina, that mental stamina. And it really kind of makes me think about your support system. Like, what, who, who, what was the support system that you had around you? Because that's very important, too. If you don't have – a good support system yeah. that mental stamina it, it's it, it's tough to get like you know you you get that mental stamina through your support system so who who was that for you man that's a great question my support system uh environment is everything like you said my support system was my mom first and foremost uh she kind of helped me through everything i had brothers who were you know i had one brother who kind of set the tone he went he played division two football and he was just he's the all American brother. Yeah. Brothers who pretty much they were all just locked up in and out or whatever, but they always told me, like, you're the one. Like, leave this other stuff for us. Like, you gotta stay focused. I had right. a brother in prison my sophomore year, and like some of the words he was saying, they just kind of clicked and hit. I still yeah. have her to this day. Yeah. Had it up, highlighted different things that he said that just kind of clicked and kind of helped propel me. But when they hear about different things, they get me on the phone and they straighten me out. Right. From my brothers to my mom to my kids' mom. Like it, it was a total village that kind of helped me get to this point. It was my coaches, it was my teammates, it was former teammates that um, I had. It's so one teammate, Marv. He kept me inspired because he was he went we went to school basically all four years of college. I had another high school teammate, Jerry, always checking in, checking on me. Uh Shug, J uh Curry, they all they my homeboys from high school, man. Yeah, like yeah. they cared. They genuinely cared. And, That's right. You know, that that made all the difference in the world. They always looked at me like, "Hey, you, like you." They always said, "You got it. You, you just got to keep going." You know, right. you, you are me to keep going. And like when you have your peers saying that, when brothers that are older than me are saying that, like that, that just did something to me. Yeah. And I, I didn't feel like I felt responsible, but didn't. But just in my mind, I just knew I was going to push forward. I wasn't going to have a a poor mindset, which translates to passing over opportunities repeatedly did not want right. to do it because right. i have passed. they they told me about the opportunities that they passed over over and over and landed them in the situation that they were so right that environment was so strong um at times yeah we get out of pocket i had a, a mentor uh dwight jefferson coach jay he's a principal now uh at a charter school in maryland so 
it was uh it was a full village support that helped me get through my four years of school yeah and, and you know another another thing too i want to talk about Antoine, is that you know you we we as as black men like you know we always see the athletes and we hear about these athletes they they, they end up going to school they end up getting the the uh the big time scholarship to whatever school it is d1 and whether they get drafted or they go overseas it's not praised enough that they actually completed school like a lot of a lot of kids don't realize that when they get that scholarship and you get a free ride or a partial ride or whatever you've 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 achieved success yes. already it yes. doesn't matter if you make it to the NBA. It doesn't matter if you make it overseas or you play semi-pro ball or whatever it is. But the fact that you've you've had that that level of success early on in your life, it's I, I, I personally, you know, you can be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but I personally feel that it's not praised enough for people to tell these kids that you have achieved some level of success and you should be honor you should be happy you should be proud of what you achieve no matter what happens no matter if you got hurt tomorrow and you know the, the the basketball career the football career is over you've achieved success because you're able to still get your degree you're still and able to be at a at a at a wonderful institution to continue your education that is success enough and you know i, I just don't i don't hear it enough i, I don't know if you agree with that I totally agree with that. Uh, when I graduated, right? <laughs> when once I graduated college, like I was like, eh. yeah, that's how it was because it's like you right. didn't get praise like that. I was like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. you know, my main thing was I want to play ball. So yeah, ball part was celebrated like none other. Yes, walking across that stage, getting that degree. No, it wasn't celebrated like that. No, no, I'm, it's not. It's not even celebrated really as you're going through the process. No. You know, and because again, life is scheduled out for me at this point. You guys, yes, exactly. It's my, you know, life is scheduled. I, I'm in this bubble uh, of, a, of a college athlete, uh, student athlete or whatever. So it's, it's, it's not celebrated because I feel like you're recruited to come there and play ball. Right. You're not recruited to come there and graduate. Yeah, exactly. I exactly. Put on that. And that's unfortunate. I think, you know, nowadays coaches, we need to start coaching the total player, the total human. Okay, not just the player, the total human is what we have to coach um and mentor and guide and not just after those one year, two years, four years, then you're just done with that player. Yeah. No, nah, I agree. It has to be, I agree. and it has to be more celebrated. You know, um, one of the things that was in our film room was um, tradition never graduates because we had a tradition of graduating our uh, ball players. Yeah, like, yeah. It, when I the the JUCO I went to Highland was like a ninety six percent graduation. Oh, good. Yeah. Went through in the in the ninety five percent and higher graduation rates. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it, it it was great, it was great, but like it didn't mean that much to me at the time because I just wanted to play ball, right? That right. Way of getting me and my family out of our situations or um, setting the tone. And and what's unfortunate about that, I was only looking at the selfish the selfish part of it. Yes. it's just my family, but not looking right. at how this can be an inspiration for people who are watching me back home. Who are at yes. the that I went to, who was at the junior right. college that I went to. Like I wasn't, I was just thinking like, oh, ball, 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 getting this to the next level, go get paid to play, X, Y, Z. But just the course of my life can be an example, can be inspiration to others. And that's why I shifted um even more of my life to to do to do that, do that type of work and talk about yeah, it. Yeah, like Definitely, definitely wanted to talk about that. So, like, you know, how how did your your life kind of push you towards being a motivational speaker? Like, you know, I guess it's because of all the stuff that you went through, you know, the 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 road that you that you've taken, 
you know, it's prepared you and it's gave you so much knowledge that you will, I'm sure you will, you want to give back, but you know, it's, it's still not a lot of people want to do that. So, you know, you're still unique in that way that you're, you're willing to go the, the, the full road to do that. So, you know, what, what really kind of nudged you in that direction? Um, so I feel like, you know, you know, God really was speaking to me, man, in the, in the quarantine situation, you know, we were all locked down. I'm, I'm teaching, teaching PE and I've talked in front of people before, like years before students, uh, coaches clinics, things of that nature. But it just, you know, life slowed down at that point and I just started to hone in on like, what do I, what do I really want to do? How can I reach more people than just basketball, than just my students? Um, how can I add value to others' lives nationwide, worldwide? That's my goal. And I was thinking, tell my story. So that's what I did. Just raw, uncut, just started talking about my story, things, talking about my successes, my failures. Uh, man, I embrace the failures. Let me tell you that. Yeah. Embrace the failures because they're lessons, right? Lessons learned. And I just, I got to this point of just, you know, I want to be more and more selfless and add value to others to help them through their time. My story may resonate with many people. Uh, the process that I took may resonate resonate with many people. Uh, understanding how important grit and growth mindset in your environment, speaking about that may be, you know, inspirational to people Then someone can take from it and use it. And however way that they want to and be able to elevate their lives, elevate the people around them. So I just want to be a, a catalyst for elevation, yeah. you know, adding value. And my, my story is extremely unique. And it's like another thing is like, OK, I want my own business. I want to be my own business. So how, what does that look like? Um, you know, started by speaking because like it's so effortlessly for me. And telling my story. So now it's just like, all right, let's, how can I take this to the next level? And I don't want to teach forever. I mean, I want to coach people in their lives and stuff like that, but I don't want to be confined to a classroom. Right. Like I, I'm 34. I'll be 35 tomorrow. My daughter's 17. She's about to graduate college. I have other kids that are coming up and I just. Happy early birthday, by the way. <laughs> I appreciate it. I I want if if you don't have something, you have to create it. Yes, yes. You don't if you don't have it, you must create it. So I want to create a life for myself, a life for my children, uh, an opportunity for them that I didn't have. Um, none of my parents, uh, neither one of my parents owned a business. Um, none of my family members owned a business up until like a, a few years ago. So now it's, I want to be a creator of things for myself, my family, and inspire others to do the same. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now, do you think that there's there's enough education within, you know, our culture, the Black community, to be able to guide kids even before they get to a point where they're like, 30 because i just feel that there's not enough resources out there for for a lot of kids like you know going back to what we were saying um you know just kind of preparing them for life and giving them that 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 pat on the back and say hey listen like you know you made it here you 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 you're ha you have a chance to get a college degree i think that would prepare them better for life like like you said you know you you ended up finishing uh uh, college and it was all about I gotta go league I gotta go league and then when it didn't happen you have a mindset where you just gotta keep going mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't like that right like they get that bad news and it's like you know life is over they don't know what to do when in the back of their mind they should have been like yo I got this degree I could be able to yeah, to do something else, I could be able to really like make change and 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 do something that I never thought that I was able to do because I was so focused on this particular side of my life. Now this this side of my life might be on on hold for right now. It might be over, 
but my life is not over. Right. And a lot of times these athletes feel that if they don't make it past a certain level, life is over because that's all they know. And I think it needs to be it needs to be more taught early on that you're more than a basketball player. Absolutely. You're more than an athlete. Like, you know, you hear LeBron James say it all the time, more than an athlete, but it needs to be really pushed. And I think it needs to be pushed early on for these kids so they can be able to have a little bit more self-worth outside of the sporting arena. You know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it's really important, man. So like, like I said, I, I, I admire you doing this because we need more people like you. We need more people like you. We need more people out there that are spreading the good word. We need more people out there that are willing to educate and really give people the facts. Like it's not about, it's not about like, you know, giving you the rosy side of life. You got to give people the truth. You, and you yeah, yeah. So let me, let me, let me speak to that. Uh, let me speak to that. Cause that's very, very important that you say that because we have to know who we are. You have to identify yourself. And my identity, I thought for a long time, was I'm a basketball player. Right. No, not who you are. That is no. who you and what you do. Right. What you do. So when we see that, if someone's not there, our environment, our village is not curving how we see basketball, how we see sports, that that's a vehicle to drive you to the next level. It's not yes. who you are because right. you look at this, when you start breaking it down, the lifespan of an NBA player, the lifespan of an NFL player, and you, you really break it down. Okay. How many people get there? Okay. What's, what's, uh, if you are not one of those marquee players, I think what, on, on average, I think it's like a couple of years. If that, years. so what happened? Yeah. What happens? Right. You get the those four years of, of of being a utility NBA player. You can. So what's after that? What about NBA players who do the whole career and they're done at thirty five? They're done at thirty eight. Right. So it's just how you you have to that environment at a young age, and um. But but I feel like that environment that's around you, the adults, the mentors, the coaches being more vulnerable we have to be more vulnerable as we as we are talking to our youth about yeah. options in life like that's a key component in leadership is being yeah. able to be vulnerable effectively communicate to our youth about these things show them we can tell i can go and talk and motivate all i want if I'm not giving you tips or showing you how and why, then yes. I'm doing my job. I'm not adding value. Absolutely. I'm intended to, like, which is my first goal. I'm not coming to you just to be a hype man. It's to add. I'm giving you the tools. Yeah. To give you tools for life, to give you a playbook for life. Hey, right. this is what works for me. You can take it, run with it we can have a conversation and break these things down and see how we can make it work for you because everybody's different. Everybody's yeah. road is different. Journey is different. We talk yeah. about, you know, the destination, the, the, the greatest part in the destination is the journey. Yes. When you, when you reach the mountaintop, it was all about the climb. It's all about the climb. Exactly. The climb, right. So we, we're just, you know, with me, I just want to talk about that and influence that and really in so many ways whether i'm talking to student athletes whether i'm talking to coaches whether i'm talking to educators whether i'm talking to students middle and high school okay if i'm brought in to talk to parents teens, right. young black men like who, whatever the case is i want to add value to their lives like I don't want to just be a speaker. I want to be um, a servant. I want to serve the people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's with not just talking, but giving those, like you said, tools, a toolkit, and being able to, you know, talk about execution. Talk about, you know, 
plans, goals, dreams, but also execution, also results, also different like discipline, how much that plays a part, self-care, how much that plays a part into everything, uh, who you're spending your time around. We can, we can talk about an environment, right? And, and our support system, but who are you spending your time with? Who right. are you talking to daily? Who are you texting? Like, are these people adding value? Are they on the same role as you? Are they helping you get to where you want to get? Okay, are they doing the same things that you're doing? Like, we got to ask the youth these questions. Yeah. Ourselves these questions, the reflection piece, you know? And, you know, I just want to be able to hit hit the mark hit hit people you know with that the youth like being on here whoever watches it today you know uh so yeah it's 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 a lot it's not celebrated on our major successes being an entrepreneur is not celebrated a lot um and you see the grind that people are doing out here it's the creative the creativity that young black boys and young black girls have is outrageous yeah yeah gotta have something an an engine behind it behind it fueling it telling them yes that's a great idea yes you can do this L let's go research this together right not and oh you're on your phone all the time you on tiktok so much you could be doing this well how about we show them right, right? You know what I'm saying? Have those conversations and show them like, hey, here, here's where I think this could help. Have you thought about this? Uh, how you say things, how you, you know, talk to kids. Um, because coming in there just rah, 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 it's not going to get the job done. No, no. It's Definitely not. not. And being able to tell a story on how that affected you and how I think this can help you, I think we'll, we'll get further along with that and just again seeing more people that look like them in those spaces yeah yeah not nah, that that's 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 100 percent right man because you know when i was growing up um I, I didn't have a lot of influential men in my life right um you know my mom is my rock you know she's still you know she she's the warrior woman you know she she she's been through a lot in her life and you know she's always shown me how to be a man and to and to to do what's right but you know to have that really inspirational male figure in my life i mean you know i got it through coaches i got it through certain teachers um certain men you know certain mentors but you know not a lot of kids have that and it's like where can, where do they find those app those outlets where do they where can they have a chance to have those people to be influential in their life like there's a lot of a lot of kids in the hood that don't have access to that so it's like where 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 do they go there's, there needs to be more programs there needs to be more more outlets for them to go to you know my my dream and if i hopefully I, i'm able to get it at some point is you know to create my own rec center mm. for kids to be able to have everything that they need there whether it be you know, uh, guidance counseling, whether it be mental health, um, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, programs in place, uh, you know, uh, sports, uh, education, tutoring, all of these things like social gatherings where they, you know, kids that don't have a lot of friends can be able to meet kids and, and, and to network and, and, and find a space to be to, to, to develop who they are. You know, we don't we don't have enough places like that, especially, like, you know, I, I live in New York and, you know, it's it's tough. You know, what yeah. I mean, I, so it's it's yeah. we, we need to we need to invest into the children. Yeah. And if we continue to invest into the children the right way, we will start to raise more responsible adults, more well-rounded men and women out there. and. That's what I'm hoping for. You know, it, the society right now, you know, it's it. There's a lot. There's a lot of bad. There's a lot of negative stuff, but there's also a lot of good stuff as well. For sure. You know that that's not being highlighted enough, in my opinion. Is you know, there's always going to be negative stuff out there, but 
everybody has to put in their work. You, you know, whether you have your own kids mm. or whether you have, you know, kids in your family, small children, be an influence in their life. Like make sure that you, you are, you're, you, you make an impact. doesn't have to be a family member. It could be just the kids in the neighborhood. Like try, try to do your part. And, you know, I think if, if, if we do that more, I think we'll be, we'll be so much better off as a society, man. It's just my yeah, opinion. I, I totally agree with that. And I, I'm going to hit you with something real quick. The schools, we have to improve. Oh, my God. We have yeah, to it's, it's crazy. Because when you break it down, again, that's part of that village, right? That's part of that village. Here's why. Because we're going to school eight hours a day five days a week for eight to nine months in a year. That's a lot of time with these educators, right? Myself included. So the, the classroom has to build the bridge to the community and back from the community back to the classroom, okay? We have to have teachers who really care about kids who really do best for kids. We have a minute, we need to have administrators that want to do best for kids and right. being teach a curriculum that's not gonna keep them bogged down for life, but actually teach them how to grow. Because you hear about these stories where they don't go to traditional schools, individuals, and they're going to be super successful. They don't feel right. this college, they don't feel this high school, whatever the case may be, to go on to finish you're going to be very successful. But our educators are having, so we need more of us, more that look like us in education, I feel like. However, in some areas, it has been made very difficult to yeah. whether get a certification in a different state. Like having you go back to school after you didn't already went, to, like whatever the case may be, like you have people that have life experiences and I feel like you have to be a champion in teaching on, on, or caring for students before you can teach them content. Caring, yeah. passion before content. That's what I like to say. Because you're not going to learn from me unless I care about you or show genuinely that I care about you. Nah, that's, a good, that's a great point. Very little, you know. So, like, I, relationships matter. Yeah. Relationships matter with students. Representation matters with students, whether it's in different content, history, how they see different things and how they see different people in the everyday content of schools. People leave that part out, but I'm here to shine a light on it, man. Like we need to have more educators that care about kids, care about black now, and brown. Now, do okay. you think do you think that that in order for that to happen? the way that these teachers are being taught needs to be changed. Absolutely. Number one, absolutely. Because now you, you're having, you're having such a shift right now that's paramount in education because you're starting to see some of these unconscious biases that you have yeah. to student or you have towards a race that you didn't realize you had that. So, right. It's forcing teachers to be more vulnerable, to be more reflective, to be more conscious of what they say and how they teach. And right. that's, that's a great start, right? That's a great start. However, the training, all of this stuff needs to be into teacher training and professional development, inclusion, diversity, uh, caring, loving. Like my number one question to, to educators, if you're watching this, why do you do this? Why do you do it? Is it for the kids? Is it for summers off? Is it because this is a life that you live your entire life with going to school throughout the year, having summers off, and you just get into that routine of being a teacher instead yeah. of being a champion teacher that are that is champion for students? Because right. that's what we need more than anything. Right, because we have, you know, majority of white people, our teachers, like it's not a lot of black educators, it's not a lot of black male educators. Correct. Right? right? Uh, and we do more than just discipline and PE. 
We do great. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's one of the things that it you know, you, you, you look at us oh just the discipline of black boys or just to teach PE. No, we're way more than that. And I think we we need to start shining a light on that. Okay. And being able to again have teachers it, it has to be taught from a lens of love, compassion, understanding that is built through relationships. Right. Because one of the things that I had with my coaches is that I was able to effectively learn from them because they cared about me. They show interest in my life. They show As a person, right. I, right. You know what I'm saying? It was very right. perfect. And that's, a, that's not saying you're going to get all kids. Not saying you're gonna get all kids or all all boys or all girls. I'm just saying it's worth a try because the way that the school system is and it's set up, it's time for it to change. It needs to yeah. be yeah. because what we see and what we're talking about now, there are so many of us that are like, man, I didn't learn this in school, man. Why they didn't teach us this in school? Right? You know right. what I'm saying? It's like these hidden figures from us until like later on in life. But so part of, that's, that's part of the things I want to do and share light on, you know, with educators like myself. I want to share that light with students and 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 how to advocate for themselves as a student and how they can be better and how you can be a community in the classroom that makes it enjoyable to learn content right because you know they say it's not what you say is how you say it it's yeah. not each it's how you teach it right is it for yourself or is it for the students to learn right trying to hide the education from our kids or we want to empower them to 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 think to have an open mind to be balanced okay uh, it's just a lot of things man in life going through all those levels, student, athlete, coach, teacher, mentor, like I'm learning all of this stuff and I just want to give it back. Right. Right. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely, man. Like I, I, I a hundred percent agree. I, I, I look at teaching. I look at the good teachers or the great teachers, like great coaches, great coaches are basically guys that or guys and women uh that look at their team and say okay i have this system but i have these certain type of players here and i am not going to let the, i'm not going to force these kids to play in this system if they are not capable of playing Let's, this system oh, so yeah. what i'm going to do is i'm going to alter my system to their skill set Absolutely. Those are the great coaches, and that's what teaching has to be, is that you are adjusting your playbook to who you have in your classroom. That's and we're not – and this is, you know, this is what needs to happen. It, it's, you know, the entire the entire structure needs to be ripped down. You know, there's so, much, there's so many things that kids are learning in school that we learned in school growing up that – it's it wasn't really truly beneficial to real life mm -hmm. and it's it's time for that to change you know the, it's time for the for these kids to have more programs available to them so they can be able to further their and expand their education you know other than history and what are they learning for the civil war and stuff like it, there's more that they have to learn and until that changes man you know, we're, we're going to continue to fall behind because when you think about, you know, other countries in regards to education, like we're way behind yeah, because yeah, of yeah. our structure. Structure is so poor, man. So, you know. I totally agree with that. And I I was talking to uh, a group of educators um, at the Rotary Club not too, not too long ago, right? So one of the things that I said was we have, and this is facts, we have like 19th century curriculum yeah. with, with uh, 20th century teachers with 21st century learners. Like, right, right. That's, that up, right? <laughs> That's true. 
it doesn't add up. And just our, our I think some of the best teachers in and worldwide are the ones who know how and do differentiate between yeah. you know advanced learners and you know learners that have challenges and things of that nature being able to continue to progress the other ones on and you know lift up uh the learners the more naive learners right, right. so it's it's uh it's a lot to be done but I, I really in the educational space is very very huge because our babies are spent spend so much time in in the educational system right? right so much time in schools and it's you know having that you're building your classroom connections you know sel is huge social emotional learning is huge now just being able to ask the right questions in the classroom to be able to further along uh, our students not just like like I always say, it has to go beyond the classroom walls. Right. Go out to the community. How can you put a lesson together that can be taught in a classroom and also be related to the neighborhood that they live in? Like how? Right. Exactly. You, exactly. Like exactly. Project based learning, like being able to because what what we're seeing is the world is changing rapidly. Technology, like. All of these, you know, like you brought up Civil War and history things, I can Google that now. Right. How is that helping me run a business? How is that helping <laughs> literacy? Right. right. No, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, though, these are the areas that I want to touch on because I'm in it. I've been through it. Uh, and I think it can just you know, have a major, major effect um, long term with how educators think, um, how admin think, how students think, you know, so, but that, that all came from just like my life. And I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking now, it's like, man, like, why didn't I care in school? Like, yeah. Although, like, yeah, I was... A B student, I was like top twenty percent of my class or something like that. Like all that, check the boxes, got like a I don't know, twenty six on my ACT, like all of that, but all right, that's not helping me right now in a space where I'm a small business owner. Exactly. You know what I'm saying it's not helping me understand the value of networking, the value of relationship, the value of um my energy and where it's spent. You know what I'm saying? So so now, yeah. qu question question for you is one do you think that you know due to the fact that you know we're in this we're in this covid atmosphere now this covid climate do you think that networking has gotten better or do you think that it's gotten worse due to the fact that everything is now you know it's all digital it's all over the web it's all you know um you know, it's all through stuff like this. Like, do you think it's it's actually making things a little bit more, um, like making the world smaller and making it more, making people understand it more? Or is it more challenging to get your point across because we can't be, you know, close to each other anymore? Like, what what are your thoughts about that? You know what? That's a fantastic question. Wow. I think I think it shrinks it, right? Because if we're at a networking event, let's talk about a networking event, right? Um, we are not going to be able to see everyone's faces. Right. Now we can. That's now true. Chat in the chat box with one another. We can explain right. and exchange information with everybody in the chat. That's a great me. Me, I'm the type of person that I like to, like, be in, you know, right there in your face. Like, yeah. I yeah. want the handshake. I want the dap up. I want, because through the screen, I can't, I can't feel someone's energy through the screen. Right. And how, when they are, right? Um, however, if I'm in person, I can do that. I can always do that with, uh, in, in person. I just... 
uh, it's pros and cons to both. Yeah, yeah. It's pros and cons to both. I think people who are more introverted, right, they're able to maybe behind the screen, they're a little bit better, a little bit more vocal. I know with my son, that that's how he is. He's a little yeah. behind the screen. Um, and then you have, if you can choose to have your camera on and off, whatever the case may be. Um, but my, 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 my biggest thing is like, it affects like really genuine relationships. And that's what I'm all about. Genuine yeah. relationships that, you know, building relationships with people that are genuine. And it's hard to tell that behind the screen. Um, but eventually, eventually they're going to give themselves away if they're not. So yeah, think, yeah. Eventually they will give themselves away. So I think it's pros and cons to both, depending on your preference. Uh, for me, listen, I'm going to navigate and get through this. <laughs> it will be, baby. Like, I, that's just who I am. I'm going to make right. it work. So, uh, so yeah, that's that's a man. That's a great question. That's a great question. Yeah, man. I, you know, I, I look at it because, like, like you said, I'm, I'm more like you. Like, you know, before COVID hit, I was always, you know, I like to interact with people because, you know, like you said, you can be able to feel that energy. You can be able to really connect with somebody and know when you're actually reaching them. Right. You know, and. You know, we're seeing with the what with the uh, you know the 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 internet based learning for these kids. You know, some kids are thriving with it, while other kids, the majority of children, they're they're struggling mightily, mightily with this no. with the system. And it's now that you know, it's just it, it's just it's yeah. tough. You're seeing parents. You're seeing parents that have never been in a position of teacher. Has right. to now be teacher, and they're frustrated, and the kid is frustrated, and the entire dynamic doesn't work. So it's like, you know, as well as we have to create a better structure for the kids, we also have to get more black and brown people, uh, men teaching. We also have to teach parents that they are the first responders. Yeah. They have to do the work like it's it's, you know, I, I get it. There's a lot of there's a lot of parents out there that work two, three jobs just to support their children. But at the end of the day. You know, sometimes you can't leave it up to the teachers and the mentors to do it. You've got to find time to teach your kids what you can do. Like, it, you know, it's a lot of, you know, you hear, oh, well, you know, I don't, I don't have time. You've got to make time. You gotta make, you make the kids. You make gotta time. make the time to put in the work to educate them. You are their first responders, and I, I think if parents understood that more, we would have a better understanding in the households that of what their jobs are supposed to be. Like you know, school is not only supposed to be for education and babysitting for a lot of these parents. It's right. supposed to be somewhere where these kids can be able to further their education not right. get their education yeah the education starts in the home school yes. is to further that so yeah. you know that's where we have to really bridge that gap because you know I, like i said i, I talked to talk to a lot of parents I'm, I'm 35 so a lot of my friends are parents a lot of um you know a lot of people i know that are parents and you know you always hear oh man you know it's tough this this online stuff but i was like bro you gotta it's tough but you have to be your your kids educators you have to make sure that you put the work in because you know you're the one that's molding their 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 psyche you're molding who they are as people they're they're young young adults growing and you're responsible for that yeah you can't put that on somebody else's neck man you know what i mean that's a good that's a great point and, and you know what i'm seeing right i'm seeing a level of empathy yeah for teachers for for teachers yes yes or right, right. that never seen before and yeah you and like speaking to those points education right now in a virtual space is very difficult for a lot of people for teachers like yeah imagine being a, an, an educator and you're like you're trying to push what's coming down from admin it could be 
self-care it could be you know like no you guys got to do this like X, yeah. y, by this amount of time and they're not allowing themselves to it it's been a mess <laughs> to or, say the least right <laughs> like there's been some great stories you know how people are able to navigate through it yeah how educators students parents been able to navigate through it but there's also some stories that are just ridiculous right yeah. and i think as parents we are seeing that oh i need to look at parenting a little bit differently right i think that's the major challenge it's like and and once you come to grips with that that okay parenting doesn't stop when your children gets 18 and out the house exactly you parent beyond your grave you're a parent beyond your grave. If 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 you're doing it, like how it's not, I wouldn't say supposed to be done because there's no playbook on parenting like that. Everybody has their own way, but parenting should go beyond the grave. Of course, all the listen, all the life lessons that you taught them, they, they the, don't stop. All the values that you've instilled in them, your your entire life, man, it goes beyond the grave. And yeah. I, a lot of us are getting a, a taste of that which is great, which is going to promote better parenting, I believe, yes. better teaching, right. better, you know, just intentionality, better, right. you know, for our students yeah. as well. And again, that level of empathy, I think a lot of it is happening now. That yeah, I agree. Before the empathy, man, a lot of people are recognizing how people are feeling, right? And they're looking at someone's perspective. They're looking at it from their perspective, right? And actually feeling what the person is feeling because some of these teachers have kids of their own who are right. doing it. So right. a lot of it is happening right now, which I think is good, which I think could be helpful moving forward. So, you know, it's, it's just when, you know, change happens, it's uncomfortable. When growth happens, it is super uncomfortable. So now we have to be in a mindset where we have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And right. I think we exactly. get I think once we, we get that, um, I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. And once we do that with being uncomfortable, right, is um, really earnest, understanding that the mindset, understanding the environment and how important that is, I think – It'll go a long way. I really, really think it'll go a long way. Yeah, so. nah, I'm I'm a hundred percent with you, man. I think that um, you know, the empathy part that you were talking about is really, really important. I think that if parents are, you know, if we're praising teachers more than we've ever done before, I think it'll it'll kind of catapult more people into going into education. Yeah, because you know if they're hearing you know growing up, we've always heard negative connotations about teachers. It's like, oh my goodness, like you know they don't get paid enough, they don't get this and that. It's just like okay, we're hearing all these negative things about teachers. Why don't we start hearing the positive stuff? Why don't we start hearing about all the good that teachers do, all the you know the patience that they have, the 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 concern. You know, they 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 even try to help kids after school. Yeah. Just, you know, whatever type of situation that, you know, what type of home life that they have, they're, they're trying to, you know, make sure that that's better. We, you know, as a society, we just so we, we focus so much on negative stuff. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. That, you know, it's it, it's just how we are, because, you know, let's think about human nature. Like I can probably ask a bunch of people. Do you remember the last nice thing somebody did for you? And they would say, eh, maybe I can probably remember. I said, but I can guarantee you can remember the last thing, something, uh, the last nasty thing some, somebody did to you. You will always remember that. That'll always stick in your mind. But somebody holding the door for you, somebody saying good morning to you, somebody helping you and doing something positive in your life, it doesn't stick because we're just not wired like that as a society. That needs to change. That and needs to change. We does. need to start rewarding more positive reinforcement 
and not worry about the negative. Let's let's start pushing the negative aside. If somebody does something to you that's bad, all right, just push it off. Right. Start championing the, the, the people that do kind things for you. Start start doing that. That's what we have to do. And that's, you know? part, that's part of that environment. Yeah. You can't stick around in, in relationships, right, in areas that are negatively affecting your life. If you can get out of it, get out of it. Right. Okay, it's if it's your if it's your kids, like somewhere somebody has to be vulnerable and somebody has to again empathy comes into play. Right. Perspective. Putting yourself in their shoes, like seeing what they feel, feel what they feel or whatever, right? But like a lot of stuff it for that to happen, it has to be unpacked. It yeah. has to be unpacked. Um what I like to say is uh speak what you seek until you see what you say. Okay. Like, come on, man. Like <laughs> the mouth and the energy, I'm telling you, speaking what you seek until you see what you say, like taking that every single day, like being positive. If you're speaking that and you're seeking positive, keep doing it until you see it. Like right. it's a game changer, right? right. It's game changer because you become what you think we all know that right no i agree i agree i'm with you man so let, let, let's let's talk a little let's talk a little who's antoine we we're, we're, we got we got some more awesome, no, i've been waiting on this let's go I, man let's go <laughs> so you know what are your what are your thoughts about the um the college basketball landscape right now like who is who is your favorite to be able to win the national championship? Who do you think is going to be the surprise team going into the tournament? Uh, I got to go with Michigan. Blue, go blue. Like, yeah. Yeah. I rock with them. Um, my nephew plays football there. Really? Okay. Yep. He, uh, so, being, I grew up Michigan football, basketball. Like, it's so crazy. Because I lived in both places, both Tennessee and Michigan. And, like, my brothers, it was about Michael Jordan, Michigan football. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So all of that. Like, we don't fool with Ohio State uh, at all. Um, so I would say Michigan is the favorite. Uh, is the favorite for it to win it all. Surprise team. Mm. So when you say surprise team, is it a uh, – are we counting – call it as a surprise team? Are we calling Power 5 schools as a surprise team? Yeah, we're, 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 counting, we're counting Power 5 team. Yeah, Power 5 schools, definitely, definitely. Uh, let's see. Somebody no one's thinking about. Exactly. Like, 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 a, like a dark horse and dark nobody's horse. talking about. Um, let me see. I would say Texas Tech. Okay. Okay. I would say Texas Tech. I would say Texas Tech. Um, now let's talk like that's, that's a dark horse, I think, to the final four. The the team who I think will be a surprise to get the probably the furthest. Um, I, I think my Winter Eagles, man, they got a chance to to advance far in the tournament, man. Yeah, they they are not looking too bad, man. They're not looking too bad. It's gonna be all about, all about seeding, man. What I've learned, you know, as a player in it, uh, as a coach, it's about seeding and matchups. Yes. Yes. Man. If you yes. if you can get the right matchups and the the right breaks go your way, man, it it can change. I'm gonna rock with my yeah. Eagles. I think my Eagles got a chance yeah. to get far. They got a chance to get far. Um, you know, so we're gonna see. I'm rooting for. I'm always rooting for them, man. So now, now what is the season, man? They broke a couple of our records. Yeah, <laughs> they all um, they 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 crushing it right now. But what what are your what are your thoughts about 
the college basketball landscape. And what I mean by that is that I had said on my show a couple of times with my, my partner, Mike Guido, we do, we do lives every Wednesday, um, mm -hmm. that college basketball, to me, this is just my opinion, I feel it's taken a significant hit in regards to the 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 watch appeal for me because I, I I'm not a fan, Antoine, of the one and done. I, I've never been a fan of it. I just believe that it it's taken away a lot of the the rivalries, a lot of the importance of 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 these these institutions of you know of March Madness, of of tournament play, conference play that, you know, I don't know if we'll ever get that back until that rule is abolished, which is, I'm sure, it's, oh, it's going to be in another couple seasons or so. Like, what are your thoughts about the one-and-done rule? And are you a fan of it? And would you want to keep it around? Or are you, uh, are you happy that it's it's actually going to go away? Uh, I do not like the one-and-done rule. I absolutely hate it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if we're taking a one and done rule away, let's offer something else out of high school. Yes. Like, I'm not trying to put limits. We should not be trying to put limits on these, on these, uh, student athletes. That's, yes. I agree with you. They have it. They have it. And school is not for them. So basically you have them one and done is you have them in for a semester. They get these classes, whatever. Second semester, you're not going to class. Why are you not right. in class? Because you're entering the draft. I don't right. think that's helpful for a program, nor or the, or the kid. Or the kid. Yeah. It, it, it's it's not helpful. And I've I have challenged people on the concept of college football. All right, if you don't go to college, if you don't go to college, then you go the let's say the G League route. And you go that, okay, you can do that. That's fine. But if you go to college, right, three years. Yeah, I, I was more saying two, but I'm <laughs> fine with three, two. Yeah. But two, two years um, because I think you're going to get a better, you're going to get a better game. Like, yes. I, like Jay Billis and them, I think, talked about how they had to go against the same people from middle school, AAU, high school, AAU, right through, through the league, you got to go through these right. same people all the time. And I just, yeah, I don't agree with the, the, the running, the, the, the one and done. I think it should have never happened. Uh, who is, who literally is capitalizing off of that? The NCAA. Those are the only people who's capitalizing off of that, in my opinion. Um, right. Not best for the programs it's not best for student athletes which is most important um and then on top of that you want to get them and then not want to get they're making money off their likeness and things of that nature uh um, right yeah just don't I, I totally disagree i don't like it it's hard to keep up with because rosters are changing over um so so yeah i uh I don't like. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. Some people are ready. I'm with you. People are ready for for that next level. Some people are not. Some people need some fine tuning, some 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 solid coaching, some more structure in their life uh, to to be successful. But um, I think you should do that at, at at a different level and not in college sports. Yeah, no, I agree with you, man. I think I think the NBA did a huge disservice to these kids. Um, not allowing them to, you know, fulfill their dreams and to go into the NBA. Like the, some of our greatest players of all time skipped college altogether and went straight to the league. So it's like, you know, you you are – what the NBA is particularly doing is that they're, they're preventing their GMs and their scouts from making monumental mistakes, but that's their job. If I'm a, if I'm a GM or a scout, and I see a kid that's 17, 18 years old out of high school, and he's about 165 pounds, maybe 6'2". I can tell you that he's not developed yet. He needs more seasoning. So maybe he needs to go to college. So maybe it's my responsibility not to draft that kid. 
and to actually bring him in and say, hey, listen, we recommend you. We recommend that you you go to college and go to college for for two seasons. And, you know, you'll you'll have an opportunity to play in this league or play in our G League system and work your way up that way. But to tell these kids that they can't go in, you know, because if the G League wasn't wasn't around, they, they had to go the overseas route. It's just, you know, you're 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 making these kids not appreciate the college experience. Yeah. And that's the problem. It's that, you know, the 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 Grant Hills, the Christian Leitners, the Shane Battiers, it, it, all of these great players, Richard Hamilton's, all of these guys that experienced the great college atmosphere, it prepared them for success in the NBA. It did. It did. You're now you're now you're now looking you're now forcing these kids to look at college as I right, well, I don't want to go. They're forcing me to go. So I'm gonna just go to any whatever school. They're gonna pay me whatever money to go there because they weren't gonna get me anyway. So I gotta I gotta get some change out of it and then I'm off to the NBA. Like, what what like you said, what are they getting out of it? You know, I miss the days because I'm a Duke fan. Duke, uh, Duke, you know, Coach K and all that. I remember when Coach K wasn't susceptible to the one and done. Yeah. Now it's one and done you. Now yeah. it's one and done you. You know, you you had guys, and that's another thing too. Is like, what about those kids that are the two star, two and a half star, the three star kids that their dream is to play at Duke and to have an opportunity, but because of these one and dones, they're not able to achieve their dream and they have to transfer. They got to go to mid-major schools. They got to go somewhere else and not have that dream of playing at the, the, the top school that they wanted to go to. You know, I, it, it's about here, here, progress. Here. It's about development. And I'm not seeing that anymore at the college level. So with, to your point on the, on the mid-major part, right, um, my mom always told me, if you're talented enough, they'll find you, they'll see you. So yeah, it's true. Proud, I, you know, I love mid majors because I played there. And it, you know, it's not, but it, it's not a knock. It's definitely not a knock on the mid majors. It's just basically, you know, you're choosing where you want to go, and because of this, 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 this engine that they have here, it's making you have to change your journey, which is fine. But you know, a lot of kids, a lot of kids flush out because of that. You know what I mean? And, and that that's my point. Like, there's nothing wrong with mid majors. They listen. I, I love mid major schools, but it's you're seeing. You're seeing the 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 rate of transfer higher now. I was just about to talk about that. I was just higher about now. The, the yeah, transfer rate the transfer rate is super high. Um, that's that's because the commitment is different. It's not real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's, but at the same time, it's like as a coach, coaching staff, you have to know what you are recruiting. Who are right. you recruiting? Why are you? Re That's why recruiting is so important. Relationships are so important because of everything that goes on with everything, everything that's happening right now. Relationships are paramount. Like, yeah, I'm not happy at Duke because a one and done came in. Okay, I have maybe a, another team that was probably second place that I can transfer to. However, that's where it's our student athletes got to start thinking now. Like, why am I leaving? Am I leaving because I'm not getting playing time? Or, right. you know, it's everybody has to evaluate their position, they, their position. To the point. Journey moving forward, what they want it to look like. Because you yeah. got a couple people who didn't transfer to like five schools in four years. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then with all that movement, that instability, then you ended up you end you end up falling off anyway, eventually. Right. So right. like, you know, everybody has you got to be very you got to think about it. You got to really reflect and see, um, like you got to be like your conscience, mind, characteristics. I'm gonna read them real quick. Your yeah. will, your imagination, your perception, your reasoning your intuition and your memory like those things your care those are characteristics for your conscious mind like you have to take think about that every time you make a decision right. like your guts like 
your percept like why i'm here why am i here why am i leaving if i want to leave is it because it's too hard whatever am i going to keep running like is this how it's going to be like it's a good point yeah sometimes you just got to stand that stand rooted in the ground with the wind blowing and everything and still make a way and still be standing at the end of the storm because it's going to great point the storms are going to come. Adversity is going to happen yeah. in life. So you just have to be in a position to deal with it. That's true. Right? That's, that's, listen, that's definitely true, man, because, you, you know, I, 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 think, I think the point that I had or, or what really sparked my, my concern about, about this whole one and done thing was the the Jalen Johnson situation at Duke. You know, this kid was highly recruited. I think he was like the number six, uh, six, uh, 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 you know, ranked player in the, in the country. And him and Coach K, you know, he wasn't playing that well. And Coach K decided to bench him. Bench him for like three straight games. And after the third game of being benched, that's when he forego, he forego the rest of the season. Yeah. So it's like, okay, did you forego your season because – you're concerned about COVID, or are you are you mad because you feel that you're coming off the bench and you don't belong on the bench? Where it's more like, okay, Coach K, this is a Hall of Fame coach. This is probably the best coach that I'll ever have in my life, in my lifetime. Let me work hard to prove and to earn my way back into that starting lineup because it's going to make me a better player at the next level. Like running away. It's not teaching you anything because at the end of the day, you go to the NBA nine times out of 10, you're not going to be starting right away. You're not going to be in somebody's rotation. You have to earn your spot in the rotation. It's not given to you no matter how high you are in the draft or not. So, you know, hopefully he forego for a different reason. But if that was the case in regards to him thinking that he was never supposed to get benched, He's in for a world of hurt, and that's where that support system needs to take him down and humble him a bit and say, listen, young man, what you did is not the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is we have to, you know, do a self-evaluation yeah. and prepare for the next level yeah. because yeah. this yeah. is going to get harder. Yep. But once you get to the NBA, it's not going to get any easier. Right. You're going to be criticized because you're now making money and people are watching your every move. So, you know, I, it was a I was just very disappointed when I saw that because I don't want to see that out of young players. I don't want to see them give up because things are too hard. No matter how high, no, no matter how high the level is or how big the school is or how, you know, how great historically this franchise is. It, 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 it sets a bad precedent for kids that are looking up to a kid like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, I definitely want to know what, what your take on that. Uh, so I have an interesting take on it. Like whatever that decision was, if he had it for the right intentions. Okay. If right. it's wrong intentions and that's what he's going to have to deal with it will eventually catch up to that person because you can only run for so long right um your own insecurities and they eventually come back up or they haunt you in the process and then you yeah. eventually have an overhaul but um it's I mean, I've seen whole, like, basketball teams, like, cancel their season. Yeah. Some were losing and canceled. Some were, I think, majority of one I've seen were, were losing. Uh, I just think that it's, it's, it's just different. It's different. So it's like how however you handle this um epic time in life yeah is going to i feel set the bar for your life for years to come 
Definitely. I whatever, agree. Whatever the case may be, whatever your truth is, or you, whatever your, like I said, your truth, whatever your truth is, that is what's going to um, set it for you. Because it's, are we going to blame everything on COVID? Right. Five years from now, we're going to blame it on COVID. Ten years from right. now, we're going to blame it on COVID. Again, your truth. So that's your truth and what you have to live with. And uh, that environment is going to be important uh, for you moving forward. Yeah. Like, no. it, it's fun because I have heard about so many opt-outs like of postseason play of rest of the season like man i got an opportunity to play postseason and i'm not gonna take it yeah i don't know because i just finished the season right we, you went that far that, already we yeah. just went that far why are we not going further if we have the opportunity yeah. but again, yeah yeah that's your truth and you're gonna have to face it one day um and go from there so yeah i just hope that your heart and mind was in the right place because you know it it, it, it can get crazy it can get crazy yeah. definitely now you know me and you me and you are uh we're big time kobe fans so um major you know, what how has how has his passing like affected your life going forward because you know i can you know you said that you know hit, hit the way he played the way hit, you know his demeanor jordan kobe yeah it it, it it kind of gave you a blueprint of 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 your mindset same thing with me like you know that mama mentality he had that from from jump you know jump. i remember i remember watching him when i was about I know, about like 10 or 11 i went down to lower marion and saw him at the, in high school and you know, I knew from then that yeah. this kid was special. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I, I played ball and had that same type of mentality. But, you know, in his passing, it really makes you appreciate the work that he put in, like the hard work. You know, yeah. he 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 never cared about making friends in the NBA. He cared about being the best. Yeah. And... Oh, after time, you know, as time passed, people developed a bigger appreciation of who he was, of yeah. what he brought to the game. Because remember, when he was playing, he was always here. Oh, Kobe Bryant's a selfish player. Kobe Bryant's this. Da, da, da. But I never saw it like that. I, I just saw a guy that was so determined to be the best at what he was doing. And, you know, if everybody applied that same type of mentality to their life, what great people will we have in all walks of life? You know what I'm right. saying? Like, what are your thoughts about, like, you know, Kobe and, you know, his impact on your life and, and after, you know, after his passing? Uh, well, yeah. Kobe, he, uh, I feel like my career went, like, side by side with his. When I played, again, it was after Mike left the league that Kobe yeah. got. It just, like, I, he was an underdog at first, you know, coming out, playoff game against Utah, airballing. I'm up there. Yeah. Oh, what's yo, what's going on? I'm rocking with this guy, right? Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I think his demeanor, his mic demeanor, it caught my eye. Um, again, at first I didn't like it, but then I just grew to love it. Like, I really, I really love watching him play. Yeah. And I think my, the, the greater appreciation I have for him I mean, everything he did, how hard he worked, his footwork, and just how he, his mastery of, of his skill, of his IQ, of his technique, I loved it. However, the part that got me is listening to him talk. Yeah, the yes. Detail, watching detail on ESPN Plus. When he oh, it was the best. Kid. Come on, man. Like, the best hearing him talk and how he articulates the game and just different points in life that he has used. One of the, one of my favorite quotes that he uses is that he used the world as his library. 
like that's something that came out of his mouth. I'm like, wow, that's that's a great that's perspective, man. Yeah. I'm gonna use that. Like I'm gonna yeah. use that. And just being able to sit back and watch him talk about what was going through his head because we saw it, but we didn't know. So to hear him articulate that and what went into his preparation, what just how he reacted, how he talked trash to people, uh, yeah. stuff he said to people, right. how get under their skin. Like, I did that. <laughs> I did that in a game. Like, people to this day hate playing against me. <laughs> I, I do little things, little veteran moves to 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 kind of get them mad. And they, yeah, yeah. I may show an elbow here. Hard. <laughs> I may foul you hard, and you're like, "Man, Twan, why?" You? I was like, "Man, hey, I just don't want you to score." So <laughs> next time, go up on me. All they're thinking about is he fouled yes. hard last time. So like, how he was able to manipulate the mind of others, like yeah. I took that and ran with it, and that that literally was part of my game. That Definitely. was part of my game, and. Definitely. I use the same thing to convey a positive point in life now is to get into the mind. And how do you get into the mind of others is you, you bring a man with a point and you give them a story about it that impacted you. And that's where they, that's when they bring, that's when uh, you bring them in and then you just show them the way out with that. So just yeah. being able to, kind of use the mind to connect with others to teach others to um you know to uh talk about your perspective and just giving them a different way of looking it is is phenomenal and watching him do that and talk about it was like why wow, it, it blew me away it totally blew me away man it was i was really blessed to uh be interviewed um after his passing uh, local TV station reach out to me to just kind of talk about it, you know, yeah. um, you know, Mamba mentality and everything that happened, you know, with that. And just, I've been blessed to be able to just talk about it and share my feelings, which has been, which has been good for me because like, like I have family texting me, calling me, asking me if I'm okay, because they knew how much like I watched this dude play and how much I, um, even after basketball, man, like I had Kobe jerseys, those yeah. are my favorite shoes to play in, they're light, uh, you know, just everything that, that came with just him as a father. Um, right. It, you know, it just, some, his legacy, it challenged me to be better. Like, it really, really challenged me to be better in every aspect of life as a father, you know, as, as, a, as a business owner, uh, as a speaker, like working on your craft and really honing in on what's important. Yeah. And being present, you know, being present uh, every day. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, man, I, I, I feel the same way. Like, you know, he, he's, he's impacted my life a great deal in – you know, just like you, a lot of people reached out to me. It was like, "Yo, man, you you good?" Like it, it was it was tough, man. It was tough, and you know, I I, I didn't speak about him for a year, and I had I can't remember what episode it was on my podcast. I actually went into it. I think I have I have the actual uh segment on my um on my Instagram. So if you want to check it out, I'll I'll send it to you. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. but um, you know, he he, he just. The way the way he was and the way he impacted so many people, man, the respect that he had worldwide, you know, it just it just shows you that, you know, when you work hard, when you put your all into something, when you 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 give it everything that you have, people are watching. People see that. Yeah. People respect that. And, you know, the the appreciation and the 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 admiration he got after he retired was just I ain't gonna lie to you. Like I, I, it was. I didn't expect it because I expected the other side of it. Yeah. When we, we used to always have, used to always have conversations with people, and I would say, I said, you're going to appreciate Kobe 
10 years after he retires. Because once you realize how his numbers stack up and what he did, you're going to be like, man, this, this deal, he was actually like one of those really elite top, top five, top 15 players of all time. Like, and people are starting to talk like that now. Yeah. Like, you know, his passing kind of <laughs> expedited things, but it was going to get there anyway because yeah. his type of career was going to, it was going to age well. It, yeah. You know, everybody was always looking at, oh, the Jordan thing, blah, blah, blah. but over time, it would have been better and better and better. And people would have been looking back and be like, yo, the things that we saw, we didn't really appreciate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it, that's what he brought to us is that we have to live in the moment. We have to work hard. We got to push ourselves and be great at what we do. And mm -hmm. that mama mentality lives forever, man. It lives forever in, in all, yeah. in all walks of life. It you lives know? forever. Yeah. I totally agree. You know, one of the things, right. Um, I, I even heard the haters, man, even the haters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even haters like they'll talk about, man, I ain't like Kobe, but man, I could not deny. Right. Know, game you know xyz just how he just attacked you right yeah uh, the, one of the greatest graphics i've seen was number eight and number 24 like stats were like mere images of each other yes i was yes nuts nuts <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's 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 amazing i'm like that doesn't happen All right not happen so like Kobe special uh always special in my heart will forever be special in my heart just like how I played um how I how I live uh, yeah it's you know it, it just majorly has affected me um Kobe rank all time uh oh hold on my I got my guy here Kobe rank all time oh <sighs> all right so how are we doing this J Rock uh yeah, you gotta you you gotta be more specific. I can only go off the people that I've seen play. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm not I'm not gonna go all the time like people that I didn't see play. If we're gonna if we're gonna rank them, we have to rank them. Gotta rank them the second best shooting guard of all time, right? Behind Jordan. Yeah, I, that's where I got him. Second best shooting. Yeah, guard. so. Yeah. Sure. Second best shooting guard. So if Jordan, if Jordan's the, you know, in a lot of people's eyes, the overall number one goat, I gotta, I have Kobe. I, I think I have Kobe seven all time on my list. Seven. Top ahead. ten. Who, who, who's who? Uh, okay, so we got 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 Jordan, LeBron. Uh, you got Magic. You got Bird. Um, you got Duncan, and maybe maybe that's it. So he's six. Maybe then. that's it. Yeah, six. Okay, so maybe six. Yeah, six, six, or six or seven, six or seven, six or seven. Uh, yeah. Uh, whew. it's tough, man. It's, it's tough. tough. It's tough. Uh, man, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I have, who do I have in there? Only person still playing I have in there is LeBron. That's the only person I have in there that's still playing. Yeah. Uh, so you got, you got LeBron number two? Yeah, I got Bron too. I got Bron too. That's I got Bron too. Like, it, it, listen, it, it, in some in some aspects, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. It, it, there's a there's a lot there's a lot of times where I think Braun is one. I, I if I'm gonna if I if you're gonna put if you're gonna give me a, a reason that to get, I, I maybe I gotta put Braun one. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. Braun, his career, man. Like you know, everybody likes to talk about the. The, the 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 finals appearances and he's four and six in the final. I don't care about all that. The, how you dominate your era is very important to me. Like, and that's why I don't know if you if you agree with this, but it's hard for me to say greatest of all time because basketball you've had so many great players, Antoine, and it's more about greatest in your era. Did you dominate your era? Yeah. And 
That's how I look at it. Like, LeBron has dominated his era. Uh, Tim Duncan dominated his era. Like, we, we, the only winner that we saw on that type of scale is Tom Brady in regards to what he did. Like, longevity, winning 20-plus years, five titles. He only lost one time in the finals. Like, those things are – they're important. They're important, man. So, you know, Braun dominated his era, so he has to be up there for me. And, you know, if, if people want to put Jordan up there, that's cool. I'm not going to – I'm not – this is not – I can't dispute you. You know what I'm saying? That's your opinion. But Braun to me, yeah, Braun might be number one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't see just – I mean, I, I watch Braun, respect Braun, like, for sure. But for me, it's it's Mike. It's Mike all day. Yeah. Just seeing him yeah. revolutionize basketball. The game. He revolutionized the game uh, and the culture of the game. It was, I feel like, when Joe, everybody wanted to dunk. Everybody wanted to dunk. Everybody wanted to be like Mike and dunk. Then now everybody wants to be the shooters now. Like, yeah. you know, my it's Mike, LBJ. I like that. Um, my boy said Jordan, LeBron, Kobe. Ooh, I, he got Kobe third? I, yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> and listen, I love I love Mamba. Mamba's my man, but I got to be real. I can't, I can't yeah. put him that high. That's though, man. I never seen Magic and Bird play like that. Yeah, that, I mean, that's true. I, okay, so we're going to keep it to, like you said, we're going to keep it the people that we've seen play. We've seen like, in our in our generation, in our you, got, you, got, you have to put Kobe up there then. So he has to be third. You got to be third. We're going to keep it in in, in in people that we've seen. Okay, Kobe's third. Yeah, Kobe's third. Yeah, just keeping it in that. If we keep it in that, that's easy. That's, that's Mike, LeBron, Kobe. Yeah, and then after that, I got Duncan. It. Duncan Shaq AI. Yeah, yeah. I'm I, I'm okay with that. I'm and then AI. and then after AI, after AI, maybe maybe I'll go Wade. Maybe I'll go Wade. Hey, I had a I got a question for you, right? Mm. <laughs> so somebody they were arguing in this on the feed. Who had the better career? D Way or Dirk? Oh I listen. See, I'm, I'm a going. lot of people. A lot of people think that's super easy. I don't. It's think not. It's, it's not. not. If you know it's the not. game, because that's all right. Easy so so let, let's let's talk about it. So 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 longevity with Dirk, explosiveness and and compact career with Wade. Compact, okay, like yeah. Okay, yeah. That's Dirk tough. did it for a, Dirk did it for a long time and consistently, man. Yeah. Like that is that, and, and think about it. Before we were talking about KD, we were talking about Dirk being a seven foot shooter that yeah. you can't guard. Yeah. Can't guard, right? Like, like, and remember, and think about it. When you talk, when you talk about great players, you talk about people that have revolutionized the game. Revolutionized. The one legged fadeaway is Dirk shot. We yep. see that all over the NBA now. So yep. his his impact on the game is going to be forever. You yep. know what I'm saying? So I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Like if I'm gonna make a case for both, like Wade at at six four, six three and a half, six four, I think he's the the most complete package I've seen at that at that size because we never saw a guard that size block shots like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's and, a good one. And you know, he was the total package, man. But slightly, I got to give it to Dirk. I'm not going to lie to you, man. I, <laughs> slightly. I got to give it to Dirk because, when he, you know, one, 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 he, he, he played with one team his entire career. He won a championship where nobody thought that that team was supposed to win the title. They beat like, the that was the best team we've seen in the last 15 years, right? Big Dirk slightly, slightly. The big, big three. I listen. I like. I like. I like Miami. If we're talking about individual, I gotta go Dirk slightly, man. Dirk. Dirk, Dirk was dominant. D. D. Wade. It's the dog in hell. Ooh. 
Ooh, we got some good challenges on that. <laughs> what, what's your what's your what's your thought on that, man? You you uh, got you got wave, you got dirt. It it was tough for me, um, because like we talk about longevity, we talk yeah. about longevity, and you know he was hampered by injured. Most compact D Wade, I, I agree. Um, if I'm if I'm taking them on my team, if I'm taking them on my team, I'm I'm taking D Wade. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Like, it, it, like that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's there's two different arguments. Like, yeah. if you're saying who would you want? Yeah, give me D Wade. But let you like you know, if you're gonna give me all right in a five year span, who do you think is gonna be more impactful? D Wade. Wade. In a 15, 16 year span, you who's hurt. going to be more impactful? Give me dirt. Dirt. So yeah. it's, a, it's a different. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's that's why it's tough. It's it's a tough conversation. Just go ahead and answer. If I'm I'm gonna give the hair to 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 Dirk. That's what I. That's what my original argument was. Yeah, that's that's me too. That's me too. Like slightly, slightly uh, argument. I went with Dirk. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm I got for you. What's I keep seeing the Dak man. What's the what's the Dak Prescott thing I was seeing on your story, man? What <laughs> you got? You got to right. um, tell me. You, about you gotta you story. gotta let me know. You gotta let me know where you fall on that. Where you talking about with Dirk and his situation? Yeah, with Dak and his situation. I mean, not that, not Dirk, but Dak. Dak. Uh, what you talking about him not being signed yet? Yeah. Oh, all right. Here's my here's my part of it. It's like anytime somebody says something negative about Dak's game, they automatically attach it to you're coming at him as a person. It's not about that. Dak Dak is a is a leader. He's been through a lot. Mm -hmm. He's he's one of the he's one of the nicest human beings out there. Right. I've, I've heard nothing but good things about him. We're talking about strictly from a business standpoint. He wants rumor now reports are saying that he wants forty million dollars. He wants to be the second highest paid quarterback behind Patrick Mahomes. Now, if you're Dallas, you're looking at a guy that okay, he's a franchise quarterback, but he's not Tom Brady, he's not Russell Wilson, he's not Aaron Rodgers, he's not uh, Deshaun Watson. Is he top? He's five? not Lamar. He's not a top five. No, okay. he's not a top five quarterback. You okay. know what I'm saying? So it's like you're gonna give him top five quarterback money or top two quarterback money, but he's not giving you top two production. He's not giving you top two, you know, leadership in regards to getting your team to the playoffs. Dak is six and eleven in his last seventeen games starting. So does mm -hmm. that warrant him getting forty plus million dollars? And and also too. Every quarterback that has made over $35 million historically, they have won no Super Bowls. Because when you give a guy that much money, can't pull you can't – Yeah, you can't – you can't – exactly. You can't put a team around him. This is why you're seeing, you're seeing Russell Wilson complain in, in, in Seattle now. He don't have the help. The offensive line is bad. He may want to get out of there. Bro, you taking thirty five million dollars a season? They're they're not good at drafting. It's gonna be bad for you. So for Dallas, it's like, all right, if they're gonna make a decision on Dak, they've already said, give me thirty four. I, I will give you thirty four change or so, and give you five years, stretch it out. He don't want that. He want four years. They can't come to an agreement. Then I. I would rather see them make a play for Russell Wilson and make that trade because he's worth that type of money. Like, you know, you know what you're getting out of Russell. He can be able to get you to the playoffs with nothing. We've seen that. Dak needs everything around him to be perfect. So why would you want, why would that be warranted for $40 million? That's my point. You That's know what I'm saying? Point. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't dabble in the, I don't dabble in the Cowboys mess. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> I have a with uh, the Detroit Lions. Oh, you a Lions fan? Okay. Big time. <laughs> but, but listen, what are your what are your thoughts on 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 golf though? I mean, golf may he may be all right, man. And if you and if they draft Jamar Chase, 
Bruh. Okay, so we have a new everything now. We have a new GM. We have a new head coach. We head have coach. coaches of color, like black right. coaches. Executives, yeah. So they're in Michigan and Detroit, both, like, they got black coaches and, like, coordinators. Right. Like, love it, right? Um, I just, I'm not sold on golf. Nope. Um, I miss Megatron. <laughs> uh, I think we should have let Jim Caldwell stay. I'm living in the past. But Yo, Jim listen. Oh, was my guy. Preach it, preach it, bro. I, preach it. The man got fired for 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 being good. For being good. For being good, right? So, um, being I, black and good. Some some bad karma is happening. I just I just we just can't get right, and I just want us to get right. Yeah. Uh, I. Yeah. I don't know about – I think how we draft is going to be key. Uh, like, what our defense is – I mean, we've been building our defense, but, like, what are we going to do in free agency? Are we keeping Kenny Galladay? Uh, the Lions need prayer. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. <laughs> they do need prayer. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough, man. Yeah. That's my that's my squad, but they yo, listen. They have talent though. You know they the the I like I like uh, uh Swift. He's good. You he's know good. if you guys can be able to get Galladay back, I, I like Hawkinson. So y'all y'all got some players. Yeah, because we always got some pieces, man. Like right, that's true. Have the person that's at the helm that is that can strategically put us in good spots. Do we have somebody who's a master motivator? Like the culture and the like, the culture is it's, is important. It's it's, it's definitely important. It was there. It was solid. It was yeah, solid. yeah. That was the last time it was. I don't blame the, the 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 Stafford situation because like man, we put him through coordinator after different coordinator after head coach after different head coach. Like, right. He and he him. and he stuck it out. He stuck it out, man. He stuck it out. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just, um, I don't know. I don't know. I I want us to be good. We're gonna see. We got a ways. We're gonna see what what this coach with no head coach experience. That's the thing I was gonna ask you. Like you know, with 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 Dan Campbell, like who uh, who, yeah, who I, knows? I don't. I don't know. I mean, uh, at least. <laughs> Jim Caldwell had interim head coach. He he's right. had you know he he coached Peyton Manning as quarterbacks coach. Right. He has right. some major experiences, right? Right. Dan Campbell, I mean, he just played for the Lions. Like he played right. Susan, bro. Like Right, right. So it's like you, you know, you 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 are you are a great player for the Lions, but the Lions were never good. Now you, what what type of culture are you bringing? Like, right. are you bringing a winning culture? Because you weren't a winning player. Not necessarily was your fault, but you know we got to see we got to see what he does in regards to how he is. Because obviously he's not. I'm sure he's not going to be an X and O's guy. He's going to be a more like you say. He's going to be a more motivator. He's going to be a more. more he's talking about biting yeah. bite kneecaps right. the conference, man. <laughs> he's talking about biting press. <laughs> You know, taking a chunk out of you on the way up and being <laughs> down. like, all right, I I'm not motivated. <laughs> you you hear that? You like, oh man, hold, hold on now, hold on, thumbs up. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? What is going? On? <laughs> so so we're you know we're gonna see, but I I just don't know, man. I. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But the yeah. draft is going to be key. Uh, draft is going to be key. Definitely need a receiver. Yeah, there, there's a couple out there, man. Yeah. I, I think yeah. I think Lamar Chase or or um, Smith. Yeah, one of those two guys, man. They, they those are difference makers. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so if they can get one of those kids, <sighs> problems. Yeah. I problems. think I think we could. Uh, I mean, we have to tailor our offense around. Obviously, the strengths of our quarterback. So, so yeah, man, we're going to see. It's uh, Football was crazy, man. This COVID season is crazy. March Madness coming up. 
Hey, you never gave me yeah, yours. Yeah, You never gave me yours, did you? Your national champion and your dog. Oh. I ain't gonna lie, man. I I um I like I like Michigan. Yeah. I, I think I think Michigan has impressed me more than any other team this year. They are they are loaded. <laughs> like they are loaded. You know what I'm saying? And um yeah, I, I think that the, you know it, it's never. We we know how this is. We know how college basketball is. It's never the favorite. It's never the that favorite. truly goes the distance. You know what I'm saying? Do they have a chance to do that? Absolutely. But you know, I would want to see them run the gamut and win the national championship. But you know, if I'm going to pick a dark horse, you know, if my Dukies get in, man. <laughs> Come on, man. your home timer, man. Come on. Now. Come on, which man? <laughs> Listen, man I, 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 hopefully, my Duke gets it, man. I, I got a root for them. I got, I got a root for them, man. I have to. I have to. I got a root for them. Got a root for them. But um, I, I, listen, I like, I like Villanova. I think, I think hey. Villanova, Villanova, they always find a way to go deep into the tournament, bro. Like it, it's just. Like you look at their team and it's just like okay, cool. They they don't really they don't have an impressive roster, but they're just well coached. They know how to play, yeah. and they're gonna be there at the end. We we know that. You know what I'm saying? So if if I'm gonna pick a dark horse team, I definitely pick Nova. And they and they top ten again. Right. They it, it, like like creeped up on you just like that. You, you see what I'm saying? Like that's just how they do it. That's just how they do it, man. I, it was a game I watched the other day. It was. Uh... No. So let me give you my dark horse for real. Because I talked about winter, but they're going far. Yeah. Uh, is 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 Baylor considered a dark horse or no? Or are they a favorite? <sighs> Where's Baylor ranked right now? Ooh, you know what? I think they're a favorite. I think they're number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a little that's a little high. Let's little talk high. about Gonzaga. What what's, what are the Zags doing? Nobody ever talk about the Zags. Nobody ever talks about this. <laughs> Yo, that's the, that's the crazy part is that nobody ever talks about them, but they're always there. They're always there. So, yeah. I'll give you the Zags. I'll give you the Zags. But they, they're, what are this? They, they're killing. Zags are, but they got one loss. I think they, they don't think they have any. Yeah, they're, they're undefeated. <laughs> the twenty four no. Nobody said. So are they a dark horse? They can't be a dark horse. They they, they're a dark horse because they're Gonzaga. <laughs> right? Like yo, keep it on it. Like yo, every right. year, every year you look at Gonzaga, you're like, yo, man, that, that team that's that, that record tough, but they're Gonzaga. They're you know what I'm saying? They it's are. crazy. It's okay. funny. All right, real quick before we get out of here, and so it's been a pleasure, man. This is this has been fun. This has been fun. I, I like yeah. to do, I like to do a little, uh, you know, quick um rapid fire trivia. Just your opinion. I'm gonna throw out some names, and you give me your opinion on who's better. All, All right. right. All right. Let's go. Kobe Bryant, or no, no, no. Matter of fact, let me let me let me let me start over. Dwayne Wade, or Tracy McGrady. Dang, that's a good one. <laughs> Grady. You going with Grady? Uh, okay. I'm 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 putting their come here's my thought process. They're yeah. together. Yes. I'm I'm just okay. yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad. Okay. okay. Um let's see. Steve Nash or Jason Kidd. Kidd. Okay. I like Kid. I like Kid. Listen, Kid, people don't know. Kid, kid was the people, cuz. Kid was Mr. Triple Double before Triple Doubles were cool, and man. He was the man. Like, yeah. Cal days, he was tough at Cal. Right. And just right. how he's led different 
organizations, man. He and think was, and think about it too. He led the Nets to back to back finals appearances. Finals appearance. People don't talk about that. Like yo, like it, it, what bothers me about Jason Kidd's uh, uh, career is that Steve Nash won back to back MVPs. Jason Kidd happened. zero. Should have never happened, man. Zero. But with. <laughs> Uh, yeah, both the years that, that, that Nash won, I think Shaq should have won it the first year. Yep. And Kobe should have won it the, the year after. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it is it, it's, it is what it is, man. But um, who would you rather have, Allen Iverson or Steph Curry? Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm rolling with the light skins, man. Light skin is sad. <laughs> you go with Curry? <laughs> Curry, man. Oh, Curry. I, I played against yeah. him, man. Yeah? Yeah, in college, man. They, we uh, played a home game versus them. Ended up losing by 11 my senior year. They were he, – he was on smash, though. He ain't did nothing. He, uh, <laughs> 12 points. We did a great job on him. Um, That's what's up. Guard Jason Richards went for I'll never forget twenty two and eleven. Mm. He he went off. So yeah, they that's my Steph Curry story. He <laughs> you can always say that Steph Curry ain't light me up. You never nope. lit me up. <laughs> nah, he ain't light me up. He had twelve points. <laughs> All right, um, better big man. Would you take Joel Embiid or would you take Hakeem Olajuwon? The dream. Yeah, yeah, I'm the, with you. The dream, like, I, that's easy for me. I said it was good at first, but I was like, the dream, man, the dream. Yeah. Oh, my, people under, people got to go do their research, man. They got to, they got to, they got to watch tape on him. They got to go back and watch tape. Yeah. And was cold. He, he was real. He's a problem. He's a problem. He had uh, David Robinson. He had them boys looking crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Face, his, fa his, face. his face. Listen, his back to the basket game was cool, but his face up game was 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 tough too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he used to give that little face up spin. Man, like, yo, yo ooh, oh, man, I'm telling you, he was tough. Um, let's see, which one I had in my head just now. Um, oh, this is a good one. This is a good because the I, I I compare these two players. Sean Kemp. Oh, I knew you was about to say conscious. Or Zion Williamson. <laughs> <laughs> I I I have not seen enough from Zion. Yeah. I just haven't. I, yeah. I haven't. So I'm going I'm going with the rain man. Okay. I'm a I, I just I I don't man. How how long has Zion been in the league? Two years. This is, yeah, this is the second year. Second year. He's you know what it is with him, man. Like I, I don't see. He's good, but I don't see generational talent. No. Like correct me. Like you agree with that? I, I totally agree with that. I totally yeah. Agree that he he's really good. I I don't. I think I think Ja's a better player, man. Yes, I think Ja can be a generational talent. Yes, he has a talent. Yeah, he has the he has the skill set to be that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. I, I said it. I said it out of the draft. I said, you know, everybody wants to talk about Zion, but Ja Morant's the guy. Ja Morant's the guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Let me give you another one. Better point guard. Better point guard. We're just talking about point guard now in regards to running a team. John Stockton or Chris Paul? John Stockton, man. Yeah. I'm going with John Stockton. I'm going with John Stockton. Um, I, I mean, running a team, like John Stockton got them boys to the finals. Back to back years. Back to back years to the finals, he just he just was really great. He, <laughs> like he he was simple. He, he wasn't had, flashy. He was 
He was he got in your face like he was a a, a, a great defender. Great defender. Like, yeah. He he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't get enough props, man. Doesn't tough, get enough props. Tough as nails. Give me um give me a comparison to who's comparable to Ray Allen. Give me somebody. What in in this in this this game right like like this generation? Uh his generation or or this generation either or. Man. It, it it's tough because Ray Allen evolved. Thank as you. A, because Thank when you. he when he got into the league when he was with Milwaukee, he he Ooh. would be able to take you off the bounce and Ooh. he was he was Jesus Shuttlesworth. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like so it, it's it's tough, man. It's ah, if you're gonna So 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 let me ask you this then. Was there anybody in the league who made that evolution of their game like that? Where they went from the man to a specialist. Oh man. That's unique right there. That's definitely unique. Um wow. That's a great question. <laughs> like you hey, put me on the spot like that that, that, that take I, it I can't, bro. I can't I can't think of it, man. Like that's that's a really good question. When y'all go on Wednesdays, man, I'm gonna go ahead and and, and, and tap into that. Nah, yeah, tap in, man. Tap in. <laughs> Get after that because I'm interested to see. Yeah, that that's a great question, man. And like he from the man to a specialist. Yeah, uh, that's he may be he may be the only one. When you think about it, right? Like when you talk about the the the, the type of player that he was. For him to be able, and that's why his shooting ability allowed him to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like he was able to 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 say, okay, you know, my my athletic skill is is not there anymore, but I can still be able to knock down his three at a consistent clip. So, yeah, man, I I, I think I think the next person to be able to do that will be Steph. I think Steph can be that guy. I think <laughs> Steph can transition into being a ball dominant guy that can be able to play off the ball as well and do all these athletic things. I think he can be able to transition and being just a specialist. He can play until he's 42 years old. If he wants to with that jump shot, he, with that jump shot, he could, he, he yeah. Was. So, but I don't, I don't, I, I, there's nobody else, man. <laughs> I can't, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Last question before we get out of here, Juan. Who is the greatest athlete in any sport, in your opinion? Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders, okay. And why do you say Deion? That's that's uh that's part of the reason why I wear 21. That was my number. Mm. Deion, man. Uh <clears throat> just to see how he was able to play multiple positions. In both football and baseball, yeah, and that journey where he just the mental stamina to to play in a football game and then play or be suited up ready for a World Series game, like I just right. af athleticism, what he did as a cornerback, returning punts, playing receiver, oh. cornerback, uh. Dude was raw, man. He he was it for me. Yeah. Now listen, I think the most impressive thing in my opinion in regards to prom time is the fact that he won a Super Bowl with the 49ers. The next and year. then left the 49ers and went to the Cowboys. And, and then won a Super Bowl with them. Like, listen, and he was the reason why they were why they won. It's like that that to me is cold. That's cold yeah. right there. You know what I mean? That's dope. That's that's me, man. That's me. That's uh, him. Yep, Deion Sanders. Yeah. What about you? Uh, my opinion, greatest athlete of all time, I would say Usain Bolt. Why? Usain Bolt is because you know when you talk about when you talk about guys that are sprinters, you know normally they're compact guys. They're you know five eight. They're 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 like my size, five eight, about you know one hundred and eighty pounds or something like that, and they're Short strides. This guy's six five, 
and long strides, and he's fast on top of that. What are you going to do with that? There's nothing you can do with that. Nah. There's nothing you can do with that. That's, that is a freak of nature. Like, that's yeah. not supposed to happen in that type of body, that type of speed, and I've that never, type of body control. Never seen that. Oh. And, you'll, and, yeah, Michael Phelps is a good one, too. Phelps, yeah. Good one. Yeah. Phelps is yeah, Phelps is a good one. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, listen, man, Antoine, it's been it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, man. I'm definitely gonna have you back. You know, whenever whenever you want to come back, <laughs> bro, bro. You know what I'm saying? Fuck, man, I appreciate uh, just the opportunity. I'm so uh, for having me on your platform, all even podcasts, man. I love it. I love it. I love it, man. Great conversation, man. I sports. I love it, man. This is yeah. It's the great equalizer for me, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Real. So, you know, tell tell everybody, you know, where they can find you and then, you know, what you got going on in the future. Yep. Uh, everybody out here that's listening, you can uh, go to my website, www.antoineharris.com. That's www.antwonharris. Be on the lookout for my ebook coming soon. Uh, I'll be speaking to uh, a school this Wednesday in Rockford, Illinois, and nice. expo at the end entrepreneurial expo at the end of the month in Rockford, Illinois. So uh, be on the lookout. Follow me on social media at Coach A Harris. Man, just kind of if you want to get inspired, I got stuff for teachers, uh, students. You know, everyday life, self care. I got my self care thing popping out tomorrow. Uh, videos about just self care. So, uh, yes, please follow me. Uh, tap in if you want to talk. Uh, sure. Yeah, man, go to my website. Check me out. Uh, coming to a school near you. Coming to an area near you. Uh, so, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like I said, I'm, I'll be tapped in, and I'll definitely gonna support. You know, you you keep doing your thing. Very inspirational. So, you know, just continue to to help as many people as you possibly can because, you know, we don't know when we're going to tap out. You know what I'm saying? So you got to you gotta make sure that you continue to do as much as you can for as many people as you can. You know what I mean? Sir, I appreciate that, and I will. Yes, sir. Peace All right, man, so we'll talk again. Yeah, have a good one. All right, man. All right. Yeah, that was uh, Antoine Harris. That was a... Uh, that was a great, great interview, man. He's a, he's a good dude. Good dude. Uh, has a lot going for himself. Um, inspirational story. Continues to inspire, you know, young people and, you know, teachers, whoever wants to, wants to, wants to get inspired and wants to hear a good word. So definitely tap into his stuff. Um, that's it for the All Even Podcast special edition, special interview. So I'll see you guys next week.